M2 MacBook Air is finally out, and to be honest, it's quite far from the leaks and rumors we had about it. So let's dive deep into comparing M1 and M2 MacBook Air and decide which one is a better buy. What's good guys, my name is Alek Nikitin, you're watching No Limits on the channel. So, M1 MacBook Air has become world's best-selling laptop and for a reason. Portability, great battery life, outstanding performance and it's absolutely silent. Of course, it's had some flaws, but overall for a thousand bucks it's still a great computer. M2 is a new generation of Apple Silicon, but is it that much more powerful than M1? It's based on the second generation of 5 nanometer process and 4P and it has slightly better power and efficiency. But nothing too crazy, because it's still a 5 nanometer process, as previously in M1. CPU still has 4 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores, but as Apple claims, the efficiency cores are now more powerful, thus giving about 18% better CPU performance, which means that the performance cores themselves have minor improvements and in heavier tasks you'd barely notice any performance difference. Also, the single core performance is very important for a lot of tasks and as you might have guessed, it's also not that much faster compared to M1, which means that the difference will be mostly on paper in terms of CPU. Now let's talk about GPU. Apple said it's a 35% increase in GPU performance compared to M1 under heavier loads. But what they didn't say is that it's only for 10-core GPU model, which starts at $1300. So if you're buying the base model with 8 GPU cores, the difference will be hardly noticeable. 35% is a good increase, but video editing for instance and especially rendering is heavily relying on encoders and decoders, you have to keep that in mind. Speaking of encoders, M2 has ProRes encoders and can handle up to 8K HEVC and H.264 footage. That's a welcome addition worth noticing for video editors. So if you work with ProRes or ProRes RAW a lot, M2 MacBook Air can give you up to 3 times faster rendering times, but the editing experience will be more or less the same. The neural engine is also upgraded up to 40% faster, nice addition. Now let's talk about memory. The bandwidth of the unified memory is now doubled, which is going to make the whole system a bit snappier. And also I found that 8GB of unified memory in both base models in M1 and M2 MacBook Air is not enough most of the time and I highly recommend upgrading to 16 gigs, but not 24 gigs because it's an overkill for an M2 MacBook Air. And it's pretty pricey as well. One of the biggest complaints of M1 MacBook Air users was the ability to connect only one external display and we still have the same issue in M2, so if you want to have dual external monitor setup you gotta upgrade to M1 Pro, so there is absolutely zero sense to upgrade to M2 in this regard. So let's have a look at the numbers and different benchmarks of M1 MacBook Air base model compared to two times more expensive M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14 and the MacBook Air M2 sits right in the middle. What we see is that M1 MacBook Air is not that slow compared to M1 Pro model, and if we apply 80% of CPU improvement and 25-35% to of GPU performance, we'll get even closer to M1 Pro, but still, the M1 Pro will be more powerful. So, to conclude, M2 is definitely better than M1, but to really feel the difference you'll need to pay at least $300 more for 10-core GPU M2 MacBook Air compared to M1 MacBook Air for $1,000. Is it worth it? It's up to you. Now let's get to the hardware. The new design is very reminiscent of MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch. M2 Air basically looks like a slimmer version of 14 inch MacBook Pro. And it's also lighter and slimmer than M1 MacBook Air. But it looks more chunky due to the lack of wet shape. And it's more rectangular. I like this design. I got used to it with my M1 MacBook Pro 16 inch. The new colors are boring to be honest, but the midnight color looks interesting. I hope it wouldn't gather fingerprints like crazy. So let's talk ports. M1 MacBook Air had only two USB-C ports. They are Thunderbolt 3 slash USB 4 ports with up to 40 gigabits per second. And unfortunately, we have the same two Thunderbolt 3 ports in M2 MacBook Air. But also M2 Air comes with MagSafe, which can free up one port, which was previously occupied for charging. Of course, you can still use the USB-C port for charging if you want to. Both the USB-C ports and the MagSafe are at the left side, same as we had with M1 MacBook Air. I would prefer ports on either side, but it's okay. On the other side, we have a headphone jack with support of high impedance headphones, so it's a bit better than the M1 MacBook Air. The keyboard now looks exactly like in MacBook Pros, with full-size function keys row and the Touch ID button. 
I like that. The trackpad is almost the same size in M2 and M1 MacBook Air. Apple claims better speakers for M2 MacBook Air, but I don't see a speaker grill and considering how thin it is, I doubt it will compete with beautiful speakers in MacBook Pro 14 inch, but they might be significantly better than the M1 Air. The screen is now a bit bigger at 13.6 inches and it's also 25% brighter at 500 nits. It's a very welcome addition, I'm really glad it is there. And it supports P3 color gamut and a billion colors and it's now a liquid retina display. But still, it's only 60 Hz. There is no ProMotion or Mini LED technology like in MacBook Pros. So all in all, it's a great improvement over the M1 Air and it's definitely worth paying extra. Especially if you plan on working on this screen as a main display play without connecting an external one. Built-in mics and webcam also got improved. Camera is now 1080p and of course we have a notch in here, which looks quite big on this display. To be honest, I just set a dark wallpaper and completely forget about the notch, so it shouldn't bother you a lot, I guess. Battery life is advertised to be slightly better than in M1 MacBook Air, but since it was one of the best on the market in this term, I'm pretty happy to get more powerful chip and a better, brighter screen and retain this same battery life. One more disappointment is that the new M2 MacBook Air is still having Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0, like in M1 MacBook Air, which is two years old. Such a shame. And also there is an option for $20 to upgrade the standard 30W charger in the base M2 Air to 35W with dual USB-C or 267 fast charger, which will charge your laptop from 0 to 50 in half an hour. In more expensive configurations, you get one of those for free. And I would definitely pick one of the better chargers, not the 30 watts. So now let's have a look at the best configurations, which I recommend for work. If you want to just browse the web and watch movies, get the base M1 Air and you'll be very happy. So for video editing, photo editing, coding and music production, I would suggest two options. If you want to get the M1 Air, pick the model with 16 gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of storage for $1200. Or you can spend more for 512 gigs of storage, but I would recommend buying a separate SSD and just plugging it in. The SSDs in those Macs are not that fast as in Pro models anyway. And I don't recommend buying 8 gigs of RAM version, it's pretty limiting. If we consider M2 MacBook Air, it makes total sense to get the 10-core GPU version and at least 16 gigs of unified memory, plus 67 watt charger and 256 gigs of storage for $1520, or 512 gigs of storage and a free 67 watt charger for $1700. So we're now only $300 away from M1 Pro MacBook Pro, so I want to compare 14 inch M1 Pro to M2 MacBook Air and see if the M1 Pro works paying extra $300 in the next video, so stay tuned for that, guys. So my conclusion, Apple is Apple, and they are making you think very hard to pick a right option for reasonable money. I would pay a bit extra to go for M2 MacBook Air if I were only choosing between those two, but if I had an option to choose the M1 Pro 14-inch MacBook Pro, I would save up and go with that model. So what's your opinion, guys? Which one would you pick and why? If you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons as I say my videos and hit the notifications bell. Here are a couple of videos for you to watch next and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.